Lagos. Today we are looking at Health Lagos with special focus on the Lagos State Traditional Medicine Board, which happens to be one of the strategic health agency in the city of Lagos. And of course, we know that health is one of the pillars of the themes agenda of Mr. Governor Babajire Somolu. Let's meet Professor Adebukola Adefule Oshitelu. She's the chairman, Lagos State Traditional Medicine Board. Madam, you're welcome you. to the program. It's a pleasure to have you. Thank you for having me. Give us very brief, precise, professional background of yourself. Born and bred in Lagos State at the Massey Street Children's Hospital some decades ago. Um, schooled in Lagos and then went to the Western Region. I finished at St. Tan's School, Ibado, Monete Ibado. And from there went to um, Glasgow, did my A-levels there and uh, came back to Lagos. So graduated from the uh, University of Lagos. 1971 in the medical school, went back again, University of London Institute of Ophthalmology for my postgraduate, and then came back to Nigeria again to practice ophthalmology, that is the eyes. And through the years, I was able to get promoted, upgraded to the level of professor, and uh, did so many researches on natural medicine Garcinia Cola in particular. From there, I became the dean of the faculty school of clinical sciences and also the first head of department. And from there, practiced on until I retired at 65. Somehow, sitting in my private room downstairs in my you know, apartment, I just got a letter a day before my birthday that They've chosen me to be the chairman of Lagos State Traditional Medicine Board. But before then, I've been involved with um, the traditional medicine practitioners. I've had to train them because at my inaugural lecture, many of them came. And from them, I met Professor Akiandewo, who actually invited me. What is the mandate, vision, and mission statement of the board? Most significantly, what are the efforts, programs, projects and initiatives in providing alternative quality health care through traditional medicine. The mandate is to regularize the traditional medicine practitioners and at the same time upgrade the practices. And our vision is to evolve into an established traditional medicine practice that is respected, standardized, documented, modernized, and protected. The major statement Lagos State's government for Ministry of Health is that they is to create an enabling environment for promotion of traditional medicine in order to harness its development for health and economic benefits. They've not actually been able to regulate them very well and that's what we have actually focused upon. We are backed by the law, 2006 reform law of the Lagos State, but we've had series of meetings with every discipline want to make sure they are regularized and they have code of you know, ethics code. The next thing for us is to enforce conformity. Good enough, the general practitioners are well regulated they take, come in and they have six weeks course, mandatory. And then the traditional bath attendants are also, they must have been trained by members of the association. Then they will have the proficiency certificate which they produce. And from then, they are now trained here too. Then to make modernization of their practice uh, more effective, they are introduced into the general hospitals. We call it a mansion program. And um, there they are trained on the, how to reduce mortality, both for the mother and the baby, the things they should expect, what they should do, what they should not do. And in their practices, after this immersion, they are now mandated to refer cases they know they cannot manage. So there's no reason why any mother or any child should die 
carelessly from traditional bath attendants. Then we have the faith-based. They are also midwives and they practice, most of them, churches or must register with the traditional medicine board and they are to renew their licenses annually. We also make sure that the facilities are standardized. Then we set up the monitoring team. We have the enforcement. There's another thing that is so important. Before they are trained, they are, we make sure the, the attestation team committee is there who will interview them one-on-one -on -one to see how proficient they are and how knowledgeable and about their own specialty before they are brought in. So far, we've been able to go on the social media, on the radio. We've been able to announce to them, hawking is prohibited in the legal state. We need cooperation with the information department, that is the NBC and the radio stations, so that they just don't allow them to come on air and be announcing you know, their products and, you know, their practices. It's not done. The Alagbos, that is the one, those women going all over the, what is it, we've arranged for all of them to belong to their associations and they are going to come here for training. Once they are trained, they will uh, be given the certificate and then the signage. They are allowed to have small places where they can display, but they are not to go hawking. So that is progress. We also do advocacy and sensitization. We do it in the Ibile fashion because Lagos State is divided into five zones. We met all of them, we listened to them, you know, and they, we've been able to establish the fact that we need model clinics and then zonal offices. So they don't need to come all the way from Badagri to come and, yes. So we are trying to establish zonal offices and then also have model clinics. We want to have a compendium of the effective drugs, traditional medicine. Once we have the uh, laboratories, we'll be more dependent on ourselves because most of these drugs themselves, these products, we are going to use them. We're going to run clinics here, model clinics. Say so you try a particular medicine on about 50 people and it works very well for 45. You know that one is, yes, effective. So we are hoping we'll be able to do that. Already slated out that once we have that infrastructure, the laboratories will begin to function. We'll be able to analyze, we'll be able to run, you know, model clinics. Then we'll be able to do productions and packages that have, you know, international standard. Last year, what, you know, the board did was actually by October 2020, we have traditional bath attendants, about 3,529. General practitioners, 2,823 of them. Bone setters, 180. They are more than that, but we will capture them more. Quranic and Alpha healers, we have 30 of them. And Ifa diviners, we have 82 of them. Then we have half sellers, 1,010. So we have a total of about 7,994 of them practicing presently that we know are registered. We have more than that. So from monitoring and from you know, enforcement, we'll be able to capture more. Just before the um, lockdown, the very first lockdown, uh, we had a seminar with NIMA and uh, about 300 participants turned up. We were, you know, they had seminar and workshop on COVID-19 and Lassa fever. Then, just a few days later, there was this lockdown that came in. Apart from that, we saw the importance of face masks. So we donated 500 face masks to Lagos State. There are some things that are inexplicable. You cannot actually explain them. Some of these practitioners will not release them. They tend to run in families. So we are trying to encourage them, you know, pay something, you know, give them some gratuities or something like that to encourage them. 
and then record audio and you know video and uh, you now see that majority of those who are now coming for training are more literate than what we used to have so this is more encouraging and if the infrastructure is improved and we are able to bring out more evidence-based traditional medicine products then they'll be able to have a proper school like it's been practiced in India, in China, and all over the place. With what regards to COVID-19, the you know, world actually were expecting that people would be dying like mosquitoes that you have flitted, you know, to die. But nature has been very gracious to us. Uh, the weather is also there, the sun with the, the vitamin D inside it. And then our diet and nutrition, they have really helped us a lot. We eat lots of fresh grains and fruits. And for this one, I'm happy to tell you that we have a remedy. Honorable Commissioner set up a research group. So we sat together and we developed you know, a program. We made a protocol. We developed a protocol and we went ahead with it. And uh, there were so many um, products brought. But the one we were very sure of, we worked on it. And it's already listed by NAFDAQ. We have so many NGOs that we are, you know, getting involved with the tuberculosis and then breastfeeding and then sexual assault and so on. We are all, you know, working together. Chairman, as an agency, can we share your challenges? Challenges, the greatest one is the edifice itself, the infrastructure. This place is heavily flooded and um, it's not conducive enough. We don't have enough classrooms. We don't have laboratories. We want to run model clinics, we cannot. We want to do packages, we cannot. And also mobilization. We need our vehicles so that we'll be able to actually monitor the practitioners and make sure they conform very importantly, that no one that is quack is actually practicing at all. We reduce it to the barest minimum. We've been informed that our governor has um, approved the vehicles. We're just waiting for allocations. We hope we'll be, they will be allocated to us. I want to thank you, Chairman, Lagos State Traditional Medicine Board. Uh, Professor Adebukola Adefule or Shitelu, thank you, ma, thank you. for coming on Health Lagos on the City of Lagos TV show. On a final note, what are your projections as an agency and most importantly, your word of assurance and encouragement to all practitioners, all stakeholders, and to Lagosians in general? The future projection is that we want to run a parallel health system with the orthodox system so that the people can choose what they want. If they want it in the orthodox way, good. And if they want it in the traditional medicine way, they are free to make their choices. And that every uh, primary health center is manned, not only by the orthodox, it's also manned by the traditional medicine practitioners and then we make sure we maintain a high level standard. Lagosians, the Lagos Trade Traditional Medicine Board is all out to make sure you have authentic traditional medicine products that you can use safely for general use. And then there's uh, this uh, 10 hectare of land at Ideno. We have already started the herbarium and we are already planting the necessary uh, traditional medicine, you know, plants that we we'll need for malaria, for cancer, for asthma, diabetes, hypertension, name them. We, they are already on. That will bring in more employment to people. And then economically, the government is going to reap highly from them. Well, that's it on Health Lagos. The City of Lagos TV show will continue in a moment. Thanks for watching.